Hello, Top Shelf. Welcome to the first episode of Roleplay Reels. For the first episode, I hope you don't mind if I'm a bit selfish when it comes to my first guest. Not only is he someone I've watched on Twitch for well over a year now, not only is he the head of the gang I'm a part of, but he's the person who introduced me to RP and whom I've learned the most about RP from since I've started. You may know him as James Burt's wife, Laura. You might remember Dracu. You may have encountered Cricket. You might even have gotten some vitamins from Gunner. But you definitely know him as the boss of the Rat Gang, Charlie McRat. Please welcome Rat Parade to the first episode of Roleplay Reels. Rat, welcome and thank you for being my first guest. Uh, it's a uh honor and pleasure to be here and let's i have to clarify leader of the gang you're in in the video game of grand theft auto um not irl uh, yeah the fbi is always watching exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> I, you know it's funny you mentioned that because i always get a little uh anxious when i'm like dming or doing something in discord and i'm talking about like gun sales I'm like, who's watching this? Who's monitoring this Discord chat? Oh, I have I have had conversations with my wife how hard it to explain it's going to be if my house, for whatever reason, ever got raided or police were looking around because there's just notepads everywhere with <laughs> absurd, wild things written down. Names, addresses, zip codes, dollar amounts, assassinations, drugs, and like all of these wild charts that is going to be very hard to explain. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so to start off with, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, whatever you want to share. Oh boy. Um, okay. So I, my um, online handle is Rat Parade. Uh, those who know me closer will call me Q or some people just call me rat. And um, I, let's see, I stream on Twitch. I did for a while. And then I'm coming back. I am coming back. I promise. As soon as I'm done with my last piece of education and my last test, I will be fully blown back on Twitch. And I'm excited about it. Okay. Give me a break. <laughs> um, I don't really, I, I don't really know what to what to share about me i like playing video games uh obviously it's my favorite thing and i've done it since i was a child um that and staring at the sun when i had to play outside um i very much enjoy role play and uh playing characters and um everything that goes along with that i don't yeah i mean that's it so how'd you get in the rp oh hmm so actually, I watched, I was an avid viewer of RP for a few years before I even ever had the, the chance to get in it uh, myself. Um, before I owned a PC, uh, I was an Xbox person for the middle part of my life and um, for many, many years. So on there, I got into Twitch and I actually started watching some people role playing on a game called Ark Survival Evolved. And it was fascinating to me watching these people interact with dozens and dozens of other real humans all playing their actual characters and roles instead of just going hard on the game and, uh, you know, looting and killing and not talking to each other. So it, it was it was a fascinating experience to witness for the first time and I got hooked on it. So I ended up watching that for a couple years between ARC and then I found GTA and later down the road a, um i guess let's see i got my computer like two years ago um so then i was able to actually play these things myself because i could download mods the the beauty of pc gaming um and that's yeah you know that's it how'd you find top shelf top shelf uh so one of uh one of my online friends that I met through streaming uh, by the name of Alpha. Uh, he 
he expressed an interest in playing RP because I had talked about it before and he said he's done it. So he's the one who kind of got me pushing to, uh, to get into it. And we ended up, you know, uh, finding a server, trying it out. It was, it was pretty fun. It was my first experience. Um, I was very new to it. There's a, there's a lot to learn, but, uh, he was, he was a big inspiration for me on kind of how to, how to operate and go about it. And then he ended up getting uh, pissed off at that server and left. So I kept rolling with it for a little bit, but he was DMing me and telling me, hey, some some other people I know, they're starting their own server. It's from the ground up. Uh, it's in it's at the end of beta right now. Uh, are you interested? So I said, sure, let's, let's give it a shot. And that's how I found Top Shelf and my new favorite home on the internet. Um. Do you have any specific approach that you take to RP? Any specific values you hold or, you know, way that you like to do it? Uh, yes. Well, I would more so say I have ways that I know that I do not like to do it. So I don't do those and whatever falls in the middle. So uh, when it comes to, at least with my own creativity... I, I cannot, I'm, I'm not an actor. I cannot act very well. I can't go off a script. I can't, anything that's planned or predetermined or any sort of loose fitting uh, idea or roadmap, I am very, very, very bad at um, navigating how to naturally, I guess, act through that that scenario. So I, I, everything I do is a very loose approach. Um, when I'm in RP, I make virtually no plans. I'll have a, a somewhat big picture, like a goal, you know, a, a massive goal at the end of the road. And that's what I'll work toward. But, but just about everything that, that I do in approach is, is kind of haphazard and unplanned. And if it's, if it's anything other than that, I sort of, fall apart and don't know how to think or operate under any um any uh pre-planned conditions so as far as you know the, the way i conduct my characters i have a loose idea and then i just dive in and say let's see what the hell happens and usually it makes some really odd weird scenarios um uh, next to that probably the biggest guiding factor for me um is I think the easiest way to keep longevity in RP and not feel burnout and to allow st ev almost any and every story to develop in some sort of interesting way, no matter how it started, is to not care at all. I don't care about uh, consequences or outcomes or I don't care about getting shit on or losing I don't care about winning. I and it's easy for me to say that. I know that's not an easy thing to do, but I've worked on it for a long time to simply let literally everything just wash over you and then roll with it. Just loosen up in the tide and let it take you wherever. Um and you take nothing personal. You take uh you don't let anything get in your head and you just roll with it and that that is that has helped me and allowed me to um continually stay positive and see through uh i've been in a lot of pretty shitty situations in rp mm -hmm. um but a lot of times i have found that they work out in a very pleasing way at the end of the road by keeping that particular mentality of just not caring what's happening i i, I, don't, I don't really know a better way to put it um I think that makes sense, and I and I agree with you. I think that's one of the most, at, at least for me, I know that's one of the most difficult things about RP, is, and it's something I still struggle with, is you know not in certain very tense situations taking things kind of personal, especially now that I've gotten to know a lot of the people outside of the city and the people behind the characters. Sometimes that makes mm -hmm. it hard to separate it. Yeah, well, it's it's human nature to. Mm -hmm. Take every interaction you have, be it in a video game or 
in real life. I mean, you're interacting with another human being who's using their brain alongside your brain. So no matter what decisions they come to, if it negatively affects you in any sort of capacity, it's it's hard to let that go because we're not wired that way. So you're... That... It brings up an interesting question for me then in that, you know, some people might not know that in, and you mentioned it earlier, that in real life you're married to Debbie slash Blondie. Mm -hmm. Yet in the city, both your characters, you know, while in the same gang are not, you know, don't have that romantic relationship. You're just two characters who happen to be in the same gang. Correct. Along the respect of, you know, how you say you're, you separate the RP from, you know, the rea you know, actual reality. How does that dynamic work between you and, and your wife? Um, I, I th it's pretty easy. I, I don't know. It's with uh, romantic RP or deeper, meaningful relationships in RP, even if you want to put it that way, is not something that I find it's not my cup of tea. And I think it, where it, it has its moments where it can um, spice up the situations and the drama and the storyline. I think more often than not, it complicates and muddies the waters and can make, um, it makes things so much more difficult to be connected with another character in that particular way that I don't enjoy it. Um, I think if, myself and Debbie, Charlie and Debbie chose to be a, a couple in the city. I think we would have had more complications and frustrations than the way we're operating now where everything is just, I don't, I, I, I don't really know how to put it. I feel like it just makes it so much more complicated that neither of us want anything to do with it. And we would rather just fly solo and, keep our stories strictly to this fantasy world of, of gang life and no sort of uh, interfamilial life. What made you decide to start a gang and specifically a gang of people in tunnels wearing rat masks? Um, ooh, that's a, that's a good one. I think it was a lot of it was a lot of little things because the idea was never anything I ever imagined and it it slowly formed into what it is now from just little 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 tiny steps. Um I mean it started that my character was a little bit of a a misfit, a little bit of an outcast and there were times where he was just getting harassed by police or certain characters, other, other civs, or he was honestly getting sick and tired of constantly being taken hostage and held up. So okay. he started finding, he thought, okay, where's some places that other people don't really like to go? The sewers. Well, the, the train station tunnels, um, but he, he refers to them as the sewer system. So I started hanging out down there and just exploring. And my character really enjoyed the, the labyrinth and the maze that was down there and sort of this underbelly of the city that uh, he started to feel like it was, it was sort of this domain that he was more connected to than anyone else. So he got very comfortable with it and then realizing that, okay, so some cops are really bad about driving down here and it's easy for them to either get lost or get hurt. Uh, so it sort of became a safe place for him. And anytime he'd go up top, there were problems. Um, so that was kind of the beginning of, of figuring out like, okay, well, what else loves these sewers? You know, kind of that, that rat life, that rat pack. And I had a couple friends in the city, which was uh, at the time uh, it was yourself, Dante, and Brian, KD. And uh, basically, I thought, you know what? It's a little lonely down here, so let's get some company. So I asked you and Brian. I was like, hey, let's start 
maybe a little group. I almost call it a gang or something, and we'll hang out down in the sewers, and that'll be our little safe spot whenever we get into trouble or anything like that. And, you know, over time, I never expected it to actually be this organization that has roots uh, so so deep and connected through every little part of the city. And, I mean, we've got turf, all the, like, you know, every people pay me and they come to us for permission to go into the sewers, which is a wild, crazy thing. And that was another, a whole other battle on its own of just organic RP that led to uh, people eventually taking that serious enough to where they wouldn't go down there. And now we have, you know, we've got our, our clubhouse up north and trade deals with different organizations, drugs, guns, all this stuff. And it, it just organically evolved from just this little idea of wanting to get away from people who kept picking on Charlie. And now this is where he's at. In, in what, seven, eight months? It really has evolved. <laughs> yeah. In, in one sense, that seems not very long. And in another, it feels like years. It does. Because there's, so, there's just so much that happens in this city so many memories it, it does feel like lifetimes so we've talked a lot about you know you and and about charlie but you also have many different characters uh that you switch between from time to time what's your reasoning behind so many of these different extremely unique characters <laughs> um ooh. so in, in part it is just because I, I like new things. So that's part of it. I get an idea and it, it it's incessant in my head and I can't really stop thinking about it until I at least try out the dumb idea. So in one way that has to do with characters. I think, oh, what it, it'd be crazy to play this or somebody like this who's just, this is his personality and how he views the world and, and trying to challenge myself to stick to that ideal that's different and separate with every particular character on what they care about and what they actually stay true to. So part of it is I just enjoy new things. Um, and what makes it easy to, to do that is um, Charlie's particular situation in the city being, being the, the head of, of the rat gang puts a lot of just communication in in his way with being a i guess a, a liaison or just a mouthpiece to talk to other people in the city keeping relations um keeping up with relations ironing out bad situations um so he's just there was one there was a period where my phone was it was 24 7 off the hook as soon as i'd fly in it never stopped ringing i remember we were often have meetings with the crew and you all would be yelling at me to put my phone in the glove box or there he goes walking away again because I had a phone call that was literally too important. And that, that ends up just getting stressful. And I just want to fly back into the city like old Charlie who had no responsibility and be in peace and just do fuck all because that was really relaxing. So there are moments where I just really can't do it um, with what Charlie's expected to do. So I keep creating these wild characters who are, I mean, if you think about all of my characters, they're, they are literally fuck off characters. They have no importance to anyone or anything. They have no, no like important jobs, no real connections, no no goals or ideals of grandeur. They just loiter around in their own particular way and fuck around. And that's all they do. They could literally die in the gutter tomorrow and never come back and no one would think about them. Well, I think um, you're, I think Lara's husband would object to that maybe, maybe not. <laughs> oh god. What R&D. what's it like? <laughs> what's it like playing a female character? Um, <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> it's a little bit hard. I have to catch myself to make sure that I don't put myself in shoes that I'm not meant to be in. So I have to be careful about how I, how I talk about things as a female character or certain perspectives. 
um, to make sure that I don't get myself into trouble by stereotyping uh, in in poor taste, uh, poorly tasteful ways. But playing Laura is an absolute blast. I I love the the accent and just something about her particular carefree personality is is extremely fun to play and i like those stupid stupid shorts that she wears where you can <laughs> see the edge of her panty line that my wife is constantly cackling about i'm um, staring at the picture on my screen right now actually it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's it's a blast and i think one of the things that's so fun about playing laura is it's such a a diverse opposite of simply playing a male character that I'm enjoying the role of pushing myself to such a, a weird, different limit of of playing a different gender and trying to play them well um, with the way they view things and the way they they talk or whatnot. Um, so it's it's just it's very enjoyable, kind of pushing that limit. So I know I've asked you this personally, but um, I think there may be some people that that want to know uh cricket um specifically how do you burp so much every 10 seconds as cricket <laughs> do you have really? like a like i was talking <laughs> with some people earlier today uh you know do you have like a warm glass of ginger ale or something or uh, <laughs> so I, I never thought this would be a question that people would wonder. I thought maybe they won't. Was, I do. <laughs> I, it's completely natural to me. All you do is just, I don't know, suck in the back of your throat in a weird way, swallow a bubble and, and let it pop back out. Well, it's yeah, but difficult. like every 10 seconds, it's <laughs> what are you talking exactly. About? <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Wow. You just you just do it. Talent. <laughs> it's just actually raw talent. <laughs> the more I get into it when I'm playing cricket, I have to um, actively think about myself to stop burping so much because it's easy to get carried away, and then I I don't realize <laughs> often I'm, I'm burping. It's, it's it's a truly terrible thing I keep doing in people's faces. Do you, oh, do you ever go back and? Well, I mean, I know you've cut videos of your stuff, but. What are some of the your, when you go back and watch something that you've done, like with cricket, where it's just you know complete ridiculousness, enjoyable but ridiculous, and you're cutting these videos? Do you ever just you know what's your reaction to watching yourself as these characters sometimes? Um. Oh boy. Some. <laughs> it, it, I get mostly enjoyment watching back on multiple on different kinds of characters just i don't know i i enjoy watching it there are moments with certain characters or certain things that i do with those characters that even watching back i'm like oh my god that was too far that was too much uh i've just i've i've gone too deep and maybe it fits the character but it's it's too much on a on a level for any other human being to have to hear or interact with with what I'm choosing to do. Um, one example on the the negative end of the spectrum is uh, the way I play Abraham Otis, who is just an extremely volatile and not pleasant to be around human being. And he says some pretty terrible things that I was even a little uncomfortable saying, but I get very into my characters at moments and sometimes I will do these things but so he he pushes the limit in the in the uncomfortable spectrum and i have to make sure i i walk a fine line with that and then let's say things that cricket says which are just just disturbing um you know i i think in particular the i'm sure you haven't forgotten because it was so terrible but the, the spider-man bandage comment oh god yeah yeah, that was that was a little bit too much. Um, but man, that's Cricket's world, um, and I'm not going to repeat it here for this. No, podcast. but it, it was small it was, children. It's funny. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I enjoy it for the most part. Some characters, I know how annoying they can be and they're intentional that way. Sort of like I would say, um, Gunner and Elmo are not meant to be enjoyable to be around. I don't even have Elmo uh, up on the screen or Abraham. Yeah. I ran out of he, room. He's a, he's a goner. Um, but I don't know. I, 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 for the most part, enjoy watching back on some of those things. With with cricket, my ultimate satisfaction, and I know I've done my job well, is if I leave a situation and the other person is just saying, what the fuck was that? They just don't know what's happening. I've done my job as cricket, and that's what I enjoy. Just being so far out there, buck wild crazy, that they're left speechless. Which I think has happened every time with someone <laughs> and it's cricket is another draining character because after a while i just it's hard for my brain to continue to be in a state of madness for so long um that when i'm done i have to sit down and decompress and i don't know read a book or something take take some tums too <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. Do you have any favorite story arc, whether your own or someone else's that you've watched or, or been a part of? Mm. A favorite story arc? Hmm. I'd have to think about this one for a minute. If I'm thinking overall arc, um,. It's easy to go with a story that I'm integrated in because sure. I know it the most well because I'm making it. But I don't know where these these pieces are going to fit just yet, but or even if he has any idea what's happening. But watching the progression of John Burt from when the first night I met him to where he's moving at now has been interesting to say the least. Um, he's one in particular that I'm very curious as to where exactly he's going for direction. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he's also moved away from burger shot and joined a new faction. That is what it looks like with the birds. So I'm curious as to what that particular angle is, but I'm just in, in referral to that. It's just, I mean, the, the first night I met him and the first couple weeks of interactions, he was, he was just a, a raving bloodthirsty murdering bastard for burger shot. And he has slowly evolved into, um, the leader of, or co-leader, I guess. I don't. I don't know how their faction exactly works or their hierarchy, but one of the uppers who has changed the way that they they do business and their mindset on how they they make friends and and deal with enemies has definitely evolved for how he takes his character and approaches it, and it's been um, it's been pretty uh, pretty interesting to watch over the the past several months, and now it's apparently I'm I'm curious as to the, the inner workings of what he's going through that has led him to at at some point feel like he needs to abandon this this small mafia or mafiosa that he was in for so long and move on to a new faction. Um, so I yeah no I'm I'm curious yeah. I think a lot of people are all right rat parade everyone um thank you rat uh for for joining us here and for being my first guest i uh, i definitely appreciate it of course yeah thank you for having me on this was uh it was fun uh check out uh rat parade at some point uh on twitch as rat underscore parade oh can i you can i plug my youtube because despite not not streaming for so long i do somewhat keep up with my personal recorded videos when i'm in the city so it's it's the same name rat i think rat underscore parade 
on YouTube. So, And be sure to tune in next week for our interview with Sparky. Yeah.